Hello again. I'm glad to be back with you. And today I want to talk to you about differential equations. Now, before you scream and run away, my students are mostly uncomfortable, sometimes just outright scared of differential equations. And I'm betting some of you are too. I know I have been in the past. I'm kind of getting over it now. I guess I'm in recovery. And I want to let you know that it doesn't need to be that way. Now I get it. We've been conditioned to be afraid of differential equations really since we knew what they were almost before then even. And if somebody's uh, in a conversation and trying to intimidate the other person about the level of math involved in the conversation, all I got to do is start talking about differential equations. And the correct response is, oh boy, that's really difficult. Well, maybe, OK? It's not that bad. Here's what I want to do a couple of things here. I want to explain to you that the world works on differential equations, whether you know it or not. You don't have to be scared of it. It's really not that big a deal. It's just another level of mathematics that you need to learn. Well, you started as a little kid learning arithmetic, and then maybe you learned some uh, shapes and geometry, maybe, and some uh, algebra and trigonometry, and just kept going. Well, this is another thing like that. If you could learn all those other things, you can learn this too. All right? in, in Relatively speaking, it's not more difficult than the last thing you learn. OK, so it's mostly going to be OK. So I want to start here by, by trying to convince you that differential equations are absolutely everywhere around us. Now, f equals ma. If there's a more common equation, a, one that more people know, I don't know what it would be. This has got to be at least close to the, to the most uh, famous equation that's out there. Well, this isn't exactly what Newton wrote. He wrote something that's closer to this. Now, he didn't use this, this uh, notation either, but it, this, is at least, this is at least closer than that. f equals mx double dot, or if you prefer to do this in a little more, uh, 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 I don't know, explicit uh, terminology. There you go. That's, e that's another way of writing the same thing. Because more than one uh, person was involved in the development of calculus, we actually have more than one way to write uh, identical things, and this is two of them right here. So mx double dot, that's the second derivative of position with respect to time. Or if you prefer, it's the curvature of position. So remember the slope of position, the first derivative is velocity. And the derivative of velocity, the slope of velocity with respect to time, is uh, acceleration. So the curvature of the position is acceleration. This is a lot more useful than this. If the m is a number and a is a number, you multiply those two together and you get the force acting on whatever it is that's accelerating. Well, what do you do if acceleration is not constant? Or what if acceleration and force are both not constant? Oh boy, now what do you do? Well, you don't have any choice but to go to a differential equation. That's what this is all about. That's what makes this so powerful. When Newton was writing down things like that, he was interested in how planets orbited about the sun. Well, we'd figured out, uh, uh, Kepler before him had figured out that planets orbited in ellipses. And because of that, the distance from the planet to the sun is always changing. Well, the problem with that is the force between the planet and the sun is a function of its distance, the distance between the two. And so the force is always changing. This isn't going to work. This is what you have to do in order to account for that. And this is uh, how uh, Isaac Newton was able to prove mathematically that Kepler was right. Um, anytime you're working with physics, um, electronics, uh, you know, mathematics, obviously, economics, uh, accelerations, aerodynamics, anything, there's, there's differential equations all over the place. This isn't bad. This is a very, very powerful tool. And as long as you get a couple ideas uh, get comfortable with a couple ideas. It's really not that bad, all right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this right here. I'm going to erase this. I just want to get away from this right now. So what the heck is a differential equation? And you see them, at least in English anyway, you see these, the, the, the slang term or the idiomatic term, the abbreviation is differential equations, diff EQs. You see that a lot. So if you hear diff EQs, that's a differential equation. Well, what is one of these things? All a differential equation is, at its root, is a function, a mathematical problem, that has a slope in it. There are lots and lots and lots of reasons, physically, uh, for physical problems, why you need the slope of some variable to appear in an equation, or sometimes a slope of a slope. It happens all the time. All right. So it's just a, pro a mathematical problem, a function that has a slope in it. That's it. That, there's, there's nothing more to it than that. All right, so we got that going on. What makes them so difficult to solve? Well, here, let me draw a little uh, uh, chart for you here. If you solve a function, 
you get a number, and I'll get my head out of your way here in a second. I'll call this a solution, I don't know, hierarchy. That sounds hierarchy. OK, that sounds pretty academic, so I'll call this a solution hierarchy. If you solve a function, you get a number. If I go out here and I write y plus 3 equals 5, well, that's a function. If I solve that, y must equal 2. All right, so the solution is 2. Okay? Differential equation lives up here. It's one higher up on the, on the food chain. If you solve a differential equation, you don't get a number. And this is perhaps the biggest idea that sometimes my students have trouble grasping. Um, I know I managed to get through way too much math before I figured this out. Way too many math classes before it dawned on me, finally, this is what was going on. If you solve a differential equation, you get a function. Well, why do you get a function when you solve a differential equation? Well, it's got slopes in it. What's the slope of a number? Slope of a number is 0. Numbers don't have slopes. Well, they do. It's 0. It's, it's horizontal. If this is to be a non-trivial solution, if that stuff there is, is going to be anything but 0, the solution has to be a function. All right? Now, there's a lot more formal mathematical uh, reasons why that's true. But if you're looking for just sort of the, the, the snapshot of it, in order for a function, a slope to appear in a, an equation, the solution th that has to have a slope. Okay? So it's going to be a function. Actually, there's even one, uh, there's a level above here called calculus of variations. If you solve a variational problem, you get a differential equation. All right? That, we don't need to talk about that for now. But don't let it scare you. It's just more math. If you can learn to do this, you can, you can go up one step higher up on the hierarchy, if you like. Not a problem. So you get a function. Uh, if you solve a differential equation, you get a function. That's what you need to know here. And let me give you an example. Um, of a simple, simple differential equation, the simplest one I can think of. Now, I'm going to tell you the problem in words, and then I'm going to show you how we solve this as a differential equation. Here's the question. This is kind of a mathematical puzzle more than a physical problem, but it's a good learning tool. Find me a function that is its own derivative. Find a function y of x where the slope is also y of x. All right? Well, how would you write that out mathematically? Well, here's how you do it. dy dx equals y. That's it. Okay. Solve this, you're going to get a function. There's a slope, there's a, there's a function. In order for this to have a meaningful answer, I've got to find a function because numbers don't have slopes. All right. Now, there's a derivative here. The only way I know how to get rid of a derivative is to integrate. Well, if you're going to integrate once, you're going to wind up with a uh, constant of integration. Well, if you're going to have a constant of integration, um, in order to clear that, you're going to need to know uh, one point along the resulting curve. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say that y sub 0 equals 1, so that when x equals 0, y equals 1. And this is called, in the differential equation world, this is called an initial condition. All right, I'll do another video about that later. So here we go. Well, dy and dx, those are variables. Right? Now, they're very, a particular kind of variable, but they're variables. The only way to get rid of them, really, is to integrate. But because they're variables, we can push them around like we do any other variable. Now, we'll never know what these are. We'll never have an actual numerical value for them. But apart from that, we can treat them like a variable. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide through by y and multiply through by dx. So I'm going to get this. All right. I have not broken any mathematical rules here. This is a perfectly legitimate thing to do. Well, how do you get rid of a dy and a dx? You integrate. Well, that's what I'm going to do here. I'll just do that. And I'm going to get, that side's going to be x plus, I'm going to call that uh, c2. And this is the integral of 1 over y is the natural log of y. Go look that up if that's, if that's news to you. OK, and I'll call that c1. So I've got the integrals of these two functions and their constants of integration. Well, a, con a constant added to a constant is still a constant. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say natural log of y equals x plus, and I'm just going to call that c, where c is really c2 minus c1. Well, gosh, what am I going to do here? It would be awfully nice if I could uh, make that y equals something, not natural log of y equals something. Well, what's the inverse function to natural log? Well, it's e to the something. So e to the natural log of y is going to be equal to e 
to the x plus c power. This doesn't look like it's getting easier, but it is, trust me. Let's go back up here. Well, e to the natural log of y, that's just y, OK? And e to the x plus c, that's e to the x plus, or times e to the c, all right? This is another constant. Well, just to make this tidier, I'm going to replace the e to the c with a. And I know it looks like I'm getting, I'm adding more and more and more constants here, but I can backtrack through the, the chain if I need to. So I've got y equals e to the ax. Well, that's nice. That's a, that's a function. It would be good if I could uh, tell you what that value of a was. Well, when y equals 1, that equals e to a, or a e to the 0. When x equals 0, y equals 1. Well, anything to the 0 power is 1, so a equals 1. So my function here, y of x equals e to the x. If I want a function that is its own derivative and passes through that point, that's it. There you go. You know what we just did here? We just solved a differential equation. Hmm. Wasn't really that hard, actually, was it? All right, now there's a lot of other kinds of differential equations, and I'm kind of running out of time here. So I'm going to uh, let it go at this, and I'm going to do another video if you guys want more. I hope this helps, and I'll talk to you next time.